Hey, hey, people. Hesketh here. When it comes to watching anime or reading manga, I... don't. Not frequently, at least. Being a weeb and the lifestyle that comes with it does not flatter me. <laughs> but then again, you don't have to watch anime to be a weeb. You just need an infatuation with Japanese culture. For example, I have a thing for 80s Japanese compact economy cars, along with 70s and 80s Japanese music. So... I could possibly be one. But I digress. Sasaki and Miyano is a very wholesome and very gay anime that came out earlier this year. I only know of this anime's existence through Gaigek. I suddenly watch anime content on YouTube, let alone anime, but he's my go-to. He posts recaps of anime that came out in a particular season. So in the winter 2022 edition, he mentioned this one. A selling point that he brought up was that the relationship portrayed was a non-toxic and healthy one. But that's not why I watched the show. I was like, yo, gay people, real. Yeah, I'll just put this on. I'm curious. I'll, let's see how this goes. But still, big ups to Gygek for bringing this show to my attention. You're an utmost gangster for that one. God, I hate my writing. One more thing. We'll be using the dub for this video. Okay, let's go. Our story begins with Miyano coming across someone getting bodied. He phones up Hirano, his senpai, to tell him about the fight, while also mustering up the courage to try and stop it himself. Before he can do that, however, a ginger-haired man stops him and says he'll handle the situation. As he goes to deal with the bullies, Miyano watches, admiring him in secret. We then jump cut to three months later, wait what? Now, Miyano and mysterious ginger-haired man are great friends. His name's Sasaki because it's in the title. As Miyano brings up, Sasaki's physical contact has been... excessive as of late. So he decides to call him out, comparing it to... slash art or whatever. By the way, what's slash art? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, it's bro. Probably what better does that if you even stay mean? In the dark, and please don't ask your friends about it either. Wait, is slash art related to moe? Or that semi wait, or uke stuff, wait, maybe? Wait, 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 I can never wait, wait, wait. Having never consumed any gay anime or or BL as it's called, being bombarded with phrases like the one Sasaki just mentioned threw me in for a loop. But I'll show you a brief rundown of what these terms mean. Sasaki then asks Miyano if he could borrow one of his manga, to which Miyano reluctantly hands him one. Well, a BL one because he's into that sort of stuff, like, what a degen bird! The next day, Sasaki tells Miyano about the manga and was surprised that it was BL, but still found it pretty good. Seeing someone that appreciates his culture, Miyano's eyes light up as he starts gushing over his BL interest to Sasaki. Seeing Miyano act so precious in front of him, Sasaki admires him in secret. While we're here, let's talk about the show's visuals. One thing you'll notice are those sort of RTX particle effects. While I am of the notion that it adds to the show's charm, I can perhaps see how it could be like, Guys, did you know that if you see those particles on screen, that like, th they like each other because profoundness? While the show's visuals aren't exactly mind-blowing, they do relay a comfy sense of pleasantness. The bloom from sunlight bleeding into the school's corridors, the warm and golden evenings, and the rays of sunshine piercing through the clouds as the fierce storm retreats. It's a cozy vibe that's probably not a unique quality of the show, but a quality I like no less. From this point onwards, Sasaki continues to visit Miyano, handing him gifts, returning borrowed manga, or just simply saying hi. After being poisoned by some alcoholic chocolates, lol L, Sasaki is handed a drink by Miyano. From this interaction, he's reminded of something that happened a while back. Come on, guys. We flash back to Sasaki getting beaten up by the guys from the intro. As he curls up in pain from the beatdown, Miyano finds him sitting there. His kind and tender attitude greatly brightens Sasaki's mood, despite the pain. Oh, that's funny. You really are cute, you know that? You wanna go out sometime? Uh, what? No. Hang on, you are joking, aren't you? <laughs> in episode 2, we hear the uh, opening for the first time, and I can say as a music fan that this song is a certified hood classic. Yo, yo, yo! <laughs> <laughs> Miyano meets Sasaki at his classroom, and he wonders how he can read all this BL without being a Fudanshi. We are then hit with this mega suspect line. Isn't it obvious? I'm getting to know someone I like. <laughs> okay, I've heard enough. Just get out of here and go to class. The bell's gonna ring soon. Oh, yeah. Cut to Miyano chilling in the corridor with his 2005 iPod shuffle. I, I can't judge. I unironically use one of these, so... Hey, what you listening to? Oh shit, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Our daddy taught us not to be ashamed of our dicks, especially since they're such good size and all. Oh, wait, 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 wait! This isn't what you think it is, I promise! It just ended up in my music by accident, that's-
that's all? I would never listen to this kind of stuff! I barely even heard any of it, I swear! Wait, do you watch the Catalina collection? <gasps> Later on, Tashiro, Miyano's friend, just straight up asks him if the two are dating. While not having any form of malice in his question, he's still quite concerned. Sasaki, you know, a guy who doesn't get good grades, a tall upperclassman, seems quite intimidating to be around someone like Miyano. Kurosawa, the other friend in the group, reassures them that he is a good guy. I mean, after all, he dealt with the bullies who bodied him in the intro. Actually, speaking of which, and I should have mentioned this earlier, but having one of our main characters be a guy like Sasaki, and the other one being, well, lack of a better term, a degenerate, is quite an interesting setup for a romance. I expected Miyano to try his best to make the moves, but it's actually Sasaki who takes a liking to Miyano instead. Because the funny thing is, Miyano is actually straight even though he reads BL, which will uh, totally not backfire on him later. As the school day draws to a close, Sasaki stops by, and they chat about the relationships of their classmates. During this, Sasaki pokes fun at Miyano, implying that he only chose an all-boys school to fulfill his fantasies, but Miyano says, that's not the case, as he discovered BL a little while after enrolling. He expands on this further by saying he got into this mess by complete accident while looking for textbooks, seeing a familiar character in some sort of anthology series. As Miyano rambles on, Sasaki desperately tries to hold his hand. He's slowly coming to the realization that he can't control himself around Miyano anymore. We're gonna pick up the pace a little bit because I don't want a 30 minute video, so here's episode 3. The boys are just chilling outside, talking about katong people, which is a Japanese term for those who can't handle hot meals. Miyano wonders if they're clumsy kissers, to which Sasaki takes this idea further. Since we're here, maybe we ought to test that theory. What theory? Let's find out whether I'm clumsy. Hmm. <laughs> Later on, Miyano spots Sasaki being confronted by a classmate about his newly found hobby. The classmate is wondering why he, well, a dude, mind you, is reading guy on guy things. But being a lightning brained, fast witted Chad, Sasaki hits him with a yo, this gay shit is in fact quite fire dog. If possible, you should read some yourself now. Hearing Sasaki defending Bio leaves Miyano feeling flustered, flushed even, so he runs off. It's white day, and Miyano gifts Sasaki some chocolates as a thank you for simply being a top G to him. Sasaki's heart melts from this exchange, completely speechless at the sight of someone he likes, handing him gifts. He runs back to his class to return the favor, stumbling on the floor as he feels his heart pounding on his chest. He returns with a whole bag of candy, and has Miyano pick as much as he pleases. With the summer break starting, the gang meets up at the school's entrance. We also meet- oh, whoa, hello handsome, what's your name? Oh, that's Hirano, bruh. Also, Miyano, stop taking pictures. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, we also meet the dude who confronted Sasaki earlier, Oga Sawada. Oga for short, because I am not pronouncing his whole name every time. It turns out he doesn't fancy BL because his girlfriend's a Fujoshi, and she considers him BL material. I know people my age throw around the term red flag a lot nowadays, but my top G's. If your girl uses you for her fantasies, her deep, deep dark, dark fantasies, fantasies, I think it's time you start reconsidering. On the train, ride home, Miyano falls asleep on Sasaki's shoulder. How wholesome. We get more suspect behavior as Sasaki leans in and whispers something in his ear. Miyano immediately wakes up, and when Sasaki gets off at a station, he starts pondering over the past few days, wondering if all of this was just some sort of elaborate prank, or if it's something more. Not to be that guy or anything, but I'm pretty sure he was just telling him his stop was coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the summer break now over, Sasaki's just chatting about the BL manga he borrowed before. Couple that with some deep and thought-provoking discussion on who the uke was. From this, we learn Miyano's preference for dudes with black hair. Oh, that explains that. Which he gets immediately blasted for because he thought it, the uke was the black-haired fella. He copes instantly by saying that the author intentionally left it ambiguous. As the two continue chatting on, some students are passing by. Hey, look, help me. Oops, my bad. <laughs> okay, seriously, there are more scenes in a similar vein to this, but this one in particular just feels excessively corny that I um couldn't help but get a small chuckle out of it. But yeah, after whatever that was, Sasaki checks if Miyano's okay, and when Miyano returns home, he finds himself in a state of panic. G gay panic. Still unsure if Sasaki is just trolling him. He thinks back to the way he held his hand. It was quite careful and considerate. The look in his eyes too. He throws a pillow in slight rage, then he looks at some BL after, you know, that. 
unsurprisingly doesn't go well. Miyano then uses some thunderbrain thinking. Instead of thinking of Sasaki as cute, he regards him as a cool guy. Miyano then gets ahead of himself and wonders if he'll be the uke or the seme. Then a shocking revelation occurs when he realizes that Sasaki is literally 6 foot and he is 5'4", but that doesn't stop him from asserting himself as a short seme. I could be one of those! The EL stories can always use more of that character type anyway! Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey! The next day, Miano finds Oga on the phone with his girlfriend. He's still worried about that whole BL thing. On top of that, she might perceive him as an uke. Oga, <laughs> Oga, it's okay, man, it's okay. Sasaki just so happens to be walking by and spots the two together. He then gets a tad bit... Protective. It's after this interaction that Miano is really conflicted with the idea that he might... Just might be into dudes. I I'm no socio-psychologist therapist, but according to my research with some subjects, having a BL collection and then saying to yourself you're not gay is an incredibly roundabout way of saying you're gay. The two meet up during the sports festival, and they talk about the usual stuff, you know, BL and whatnot. Miyano finds comfort in Sasaki's presence, just not in a gay way. He's still not there yet. Looking back at what he said on the train, Miyano doesn't think he said anything suspicious at all. Well, speaking of which, Sasaki decides to drop the bomb. Hey, can I tell you something? Sure. Thing is, Miyano, I like you. Yes, nigga. Kurosawa's looking for a Miyano, so he goes, but as he heads out, he asks Sasaki what he likes about him. Sasaki folds immediately by saying, your, your face, face, which puts Miyano off. Well, why would he be put off by something like that? Well, you see, in his middle school days, Miyano was often told that he looked very feminine, which he brushed off initially. But as these comments became more and more frequent, he gradually became sick of them, making him insecure about how he looks. And hearing Sasaki say that was the last thing he needed. But the thing is, Sasaki did did mean it when he said he liked his face, but he wanted to say more. From how bubbly Miano is around him, and his eyes that shine with passion. Also, that gift on White Day too. So, not just his face, but he appreciates everything. Remember when I said that in Gygek's video, he brought up how not toxic and healthy the relationship portrayed was? We should expand on that very quickly. In the better videos about this show, folks tend to compare this to other BL anime that came before it. They say that prior to Sasaki Miano, a lot of these shows had these really toxic and one-sided relationships, and the only BL series that had sort of broken that mold was 2019's Given. Haven't seen it? Don't plan to, but all I know is that it's a big sad. Another point that they usually bring up is how Sasaki and Miyano also raises some questions on what it means to actually love someone. As Sasaki mentioned earlier, his affection for Miyano is solely for him as a person. Not because he's a dude, but as a person. Okay, if you want more nuanced discussion on sexuality and identity, please do, do not watch this channel and go somewhere else. I don't mess with that sort of stuff, leave me alone. Miyano struggles to process all of this and needs to figure out how he feels about Sasaki. Um, he's also sick too, so yeah. While working for the disciplinary committee with Hirano, Miyano passes out, lol. Around this time, Sasaki shows up to tell Hirano that he's needed. And once he leaves, Sasaki's alone with Miyano. And as he stands over the person he likes, he fights the temptation to kiss him through the mask. While he's sleeping. No, that is not okay in real life. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, brother. Before his intrusive thoughts take over, Hirano shows up and tells Miyano to just go home. Once he's gone, Sasaki tells him about his botched confession. It's here we learn that after nearly five episodes and nearly a year's worth of BL dealing... Wait, don't tell me you don't have Miyano's number. Hmm? So he phones up Miano to set things right, telling him that his face isn't the only thing he likes. This call leaves Miano red all over, and as he and his friends walk together, he gets reassurance from Tashino that he's not so feminine looking. Miano's also hit with the realization that he's relieved that Sasaki likes him for more than his face, which is something that he didn't expect. Sasaki's birthday's coming up, and we get more insight into Kurosawa's love life. He has a girlfriend, and he's a simp. Well, a rare type, you see, his efforts to shower his girlfriend with love aren't in vain, and she likes him back. When he talks about her, he will run his mouth. Her cute smile was what stole my heart. I fell for her right then. Tashiro falls victim to Kurosawa's lovey-dovey rambles, and it's here that he also gives Miyano an idea for Sasaki's gift. Candy. 
So, on his birthday, Miyano gives some candy to Sasaki. And seeing him smile brings Miyano back to something that Kurosawa said earlier. You know, the, it, it was, was her cute, cute smile, smile that stole, stole my heart, heart right then. then. Speaking of which, Kurosawa is becoming a student in the art of BL dealing. For, uh, his girlfriend, of course. She's, She's extremely particular about her BL. For example, she says that it must have a sexy man, and it also must be pop idol themed. Well, um, Kurosawa, I would like to recommend you this. As Miyano walks home with Sasaki, he says that he likes him. Not in a gay way, but in a I look up to you way, which is a massive cope. He worries about how different he'll look when he's older, maybe growing taller or ending up the same height. With all said and done, though, he says he still needs more time to think about what Sasaki said. Sasaki, being more than satisfied with his answer, gives Miyano head pets. How wholesome. The cultural festival will have a cross-dressing competition. We'll decide who represents our class with a vote. That's uh, one way to start an episode, I guess. So uh, Yeah, so Miano is voted as their representative, but seeing the support from his friends and classmates gives him some solace and takes up the role. Kurosawa opts in for backup. Based. Talking about his situation to his fellow committee members, Chairman Hanzawa offers his sister's cosplay outfits. While the boys are at the train station, Miano encounters one of his previous middle school crushes. Now, this girl, when I saw her for some reason, I thought a love triangle would develop this late into the show. And if the show did, if it ever entertained the idea even slightly, mm -mm -mm. Nah, it's over. I would have just stopped. Cold Turkey, Sub Zero, even. Miyano's former crush was the catalyst for his insecurities about looking feminine. She attempted to mock him by making him wear girly clothes. But as it turns out, she only wanted him as a model for her art projects. Then Miyano's finally about to do something that he desperately needs after all that BL reading feel the touch of a woman. But uh, Sasaki's protective instincts kicked in and got them out of there. And shortly after, he apologizes for being rough on Miyano, stating that he doesn't want to be rough with someone he he likes. And Miyano responds as one should. I mean, look at him, jeez. At school the next day, Miyano finds out that Sasaki bought a BL manga off his own volition. Seeing Miyano react so cheerfully to the news, Sasaki walks to class while his heart melts away. But I almost hugged him just now. I mean, you've done that in the first episode, right? Just in a zesty, suspect way, and not in a I'm gay way, so try that again. So, the school is prepping for the cultural festival, and our backup Chad Mad Kurosawa demos some femme drip, and of course he baits Tashiro. Later on, Hanzawa helps Miyano try on some clothes for the cross-dressing competition. While testing the fit, Miyano poses a serious question. Um, Chairman, what do you think it means to have feelings for somebody? Well, it's tricky. I have to imagine it's different from person to person. For starters, it means wanting to do things for someone. To spend time with them. The desire to hold their hand. The desire to be by their side. Wanting to hold them. Wanting them all to yourself. All to myself. But I think... The main sign of love is... Hey, You're right there. Sorry, Mia, no. I'll be back in a sec. Gotcha. The next day, Hanzawa's adding final touches to the costumes. Then he suddenly sounds stereotypically upper-class British. By Jove, I've done it! I told you I was the man for the job! We also get more simp Kurosawa, flexing his new femboy drip with a snapchat story for his girlfriend. Now, ladies, get yourself a man like this, okay? Hanzawa leaves for a bit, and of course Sasaki just so happens to be passing by. Once he locks the door behind him, well, you know it's going down. Seeing Miyano in drag prompts a confrontation. You should probably be getting back you to You just your let your classmates pressure you like that. <sighs> Wait, no, I, I didn't... Uh... Miyano recognizes how careful Sasaki is when he talks to him. Damn, it's almost as if... It's because he likes me. Didn't he tell you like three episodes ago? He asks Miyano if he'd drop out of the competition if he told him to. Miyano thinks of all the hard work his classmates and Chairman Hanzawa had put in, feeling it would just all go to waste if he backed out now. And as Miyano tries to leave... Sasaki, you're super quiet. I want quiet. to take care of him. Is there something wrong? Hold him. Yeah, I think they like each other.
While in the warmth of Sasaki's embrace, Miyano tries to return it, ultimately backing out. The two eye each other briefly as Sasaki leans in for a kiss. He stops himself before going too far, and as he leaves, he places his palm on Miyano's cheek. The day after, Miyano reflects on what happened, not getting over the fact that he tried to hug Sasaki back. Thoughts are racing around his mind, mulling over his feelings for him. He thinks of maybe kissing him. Too early, he thinks, considering they aren't even dating yet. The two would meet in the halls, as Miyano tells Sasaki that he will participate in the drag competition. He goes on about the support that he's been receiving from his classmates, and how he's no longer as insecure about his feminine appearance. Sasaki appreciates his honesty and wishes him good luck. There you are- Crap, I almost interrupted. This very well is a nitpick, but in the relatively small selection of anime I've watched, more often than not characters will have these inner monologues that say literally what's happening or happened on screen. Perhaps it's related to culture and a different way of expressing things, or maybe it's a small window into a character's mind. They sometimes work if we get new crucial revelations, but it feels largely unnecessary, especially when a monologue points out something rather mundane. Like, I don't want to have a scene where some characters have an argument. Part of the problem is what? we can recompile but the hardware, if it's a hardware problem, we can't get into the back. Why not? Why can't he get into the machine? You need special tools. What kind of special tools? Just take a screwdriver. You didn't want users to be able to open it. You need special tools. And then someone goes, So you need special tools to open the Macintosh? That's messed up. But hey, I guess that's just preference. Before they head their own way for the day, Miyano asks Sasaki if he has free time during the festival, planning a kind of date, but not really, because they aren't official just yet. Later on in the school day, Sasaki develops a bad case of the sniffles. Heading to the nurse's office, he also comes across Miyano, who is there from a cooking accident. The two make themselves comfortable in the nursing office. Miyano helps Sasaki deal with his sniffles, and seeing Miyano so willing to take care of him leaves Sasaki red-faced, still unsure if he actually likes him back or if he simply respects him as an upperclassman. It's either that or the symptoms are worsening. <laughs> the school festival is finally here, and Miyano along with Kurosawa head over to Sasaki's class, as they're doing a delinquent cafe as their theme. Arriving there, we get hit with... Yeah, what do you want? Wow. <laughs> that. Kurosawa appropriately catches him in 4K. Apparently, the cafe also comes with a fortune teller, which is pretty weird considering that- Oh, of course, Hanzawa's the fortune teller. I'm sure he won't play matchmaker and subtly nudge Miyano into accepting his feelings for Sasaki because that's the title of the show, or... Something. Kurosawa decides to check it out. While waiting, Miyano takes in the- Whoa, 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 hello, sexy man. What's your name? Oh, it's- Oh, it's Hirano again! My bad, it was the hair plus no homo plus W plus did ass. Kurosawa comes back, telling Miyano that he was having difficulties choosing which BL to buy for his girlfriend. One with a sexy manager or a sexy pop idol. He told me to pick the one I felt a closer connection to. And the pop idol is closer to me in age, so I think I'll go with that one. I'm starting to think you're a Fudanchi too. No, I'm just an extremely dedicated boyfriend. Ah yes, we appreciate Chad Kurosawa, the best character. Yeah, anyways, Miyano seeks wisdom from fortune teller Hanzawa. He asks about how to be confident with his feelings. Hanzawa has Miyano shuffle some tarot cards, and he picks up strength, which can be deciphered as persistence. Hanzawa ends the meeting by giving Miyano some encouragement to keep moving forward. Well, like I said, Mr. Matchmaker over here. It's time the two start their kind of dates, visiting classrooms while trying out their activities and food. Although they're keen on doing more, Miyano's drag competition coming up, so they leave it here as Miyano gets ready. Finally, we can see all the hard work and effort put in by Miyano's classmates and Hanzawa. While watching the competition, Sasaki remembers something Miyano said a while back. He was worried about how he would look once he became older. He realizes that Miyano was considering him long term. It, well, it might have been him just rambling on as he usually does, but Sasaki holds on to that possibility. Miyano doesn't win the drag competition, but at least he finds comfort in the fact that someone else looks more girly than him. The two would meet later as the festival wraps up. Miyano is still unsure exactly how he feels and urges Sasaki to wait a little while for his answer. As the fireworks ceremony rages on in the distance, Sasaki takes his hand and rests his head on Miyano's shoulder. You thought they'd kiss, did you? No. Sasaki says he can wait, but in reality, he's struggling to restrain himself. Miyano does like him, but he still needs more time. He doesn't want to just try it out, on the off chance that later down the line it won't be the same. He doesn't want to hurt Sasaki, especially after all he's done for him. 
Some time passes by, and the two would meet again at the mall. Turns out that Oga-san's here too. The boys head over for some tea, but Sasaki needs to help with his sister shopping. While waiting, Oga-san and Miyano chat about their fellow classmates. He then interrogates Miyano, suspicious of how he and Sasaki spend time together, pointing out that Sasaki would often dog the boys just to spend time with him. Miyano tries his best to downplay this, saying that he only respects him as an upperclassman, which is a massive cope and his only defense. When Sasaki returns, we get the best piece of acting in an anime bar none. You'd better not be bothering him. Is everything okay here, Mia? Oh, two Oscars! Two Oscars! Next up, Miyano and Sasaki go on a movie date. They watch some bangers from the Catalina collection, such as Score, someday. Playing With Fire 2, and Cockpit. Ball. After this, Sasaki says that he really enjoys the time they spent together. And it's here, standing in a crowded cinema lobby, heart pounding on his chest with cheeks red all over, Miyano realizes that he doesn't just like Sasaki, he loves him. He tries to gush his feelings ASAP, but you wouldn't do that in a crowded public place, would you? <laughs> with Christmas coming and coming fast, Miyano still plans to spend time with Sasaki over the winter break. On one of their hangouts, Miyano meets Hanzawa and his older brother, and honestly, I think I'm a bloody idiot for not understanding this scene. I even flipped through the manga just to double check if they swapped like a few lines of dialogue and no. So Hanzawa snaps at his brother because he thought that he was dating Miyano, retorting that he needs to stop tying everything back to romance. And as the brothers head off, Hanzawa apologizes for that attitude earlier, saying that he doesn't have any strong opinions on his brother's sexuality. We flash back to Hanzawa's other brothers coming out as home of the sexuals to their mother, leaving grandkid duty in Hanzawa's hands. From what my deep fried brain can understand, Hanzawa was worried about his brothers being unable to find like a partner they could be happy with, but seeing Sasaki and Miyano being so happy around each other gave him hope that one day his brothers will find that special someone. Th that's the part I understand, but Hanzawa's fondness of Miyano raises a few eyebrows, yet that gets shot down as he claims to be straight. It's also mentioned that like Hanzawa has a lot of friends, good friends at that, but never anyone special, so if I were to follow Twitter logic, then I would assume that he's also home of the sexuals. Then again, I guess I should just take it at face value. I mean, I'm not watching No Country for Old Men. With the winter break now over, Miyano tries to get the two of them alone together. But as the days go by, over and over again, he just can't get the two of them alone. Something always happens to crop up at the worst possible time. One day, however, Miyano thinks he finally has the chance. Sasaki points out that Miyano slings his bag to the shoulder opposite him. Miyano says that he just doesn't want his bag to bump against him while walking together. The degree of Miyano's considerations towards Sasaki absolutely sends him, but he just doesn't want to show it yet. As the two head out, Miyano is needed once more, and that is once more too many. He realizes that he blew possibly his last opportunity. But Sasaki has other plans. Oh, oh, yo? Oh, oh, yo? Okay? I like let's go? So much. Let, let, let's go? <laughs> or, or not? Come on. Come on. Sorry. Miano, Mi Miano, stop sacking it, bro. I don't know what to- uh, Oh my I, god. Uh, <laughs> Sasaki... was bent down. Finally kiss me. Oh nah bro, you think? Sorry, oh he's I'll going! Just... Oh he's what? going! Sasuke, he's leaving! Wait. No! <gasps> Bruh, no, the credits better not roll here. Bruh! <laughs> wow! 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 Miyano stumbles into the courtyard, trying to find Sasaki. Hanzawa along with Hirano just so happen to pass by and offer their help. Hirano phones him up because they still haven't traded phone numbers, goddammit! Miyano confirms to Hanzawa that he likes Sasaki. Hanzawa then expresses his concerns to Miyano, stating the possibilities of getting weird looks from strangers, and maybe being bombarded by questions or threats. However, Miyano was confident that the two of them can pull through any challenges in the future. No word from Sasaki, but Hirano says that he might be at his family's bakery. Miyano then runs off to catch Sasaki there, thanking the two as he gaps. On the train, he reflects on everything. All the great times they've spent together, how much he cares for him, his warm embrace, and all of the BL trade deals. Miyano is now 100% confident that he wants to kiss Sasaki. The two cross paths at the train station, and Miyano suggests heading somewhere to talk with him. Sasaki apologizes for trying to kiss him earlier, but then Miyano goes like, Bro, I'm in love with you. Like, Full homo. He shows his admiration for Sasaki's bravery and his compassion. After we started hanging out, I saw you being brave and wished I were more like that. Sometimes I just want to wrap my arms around you so bad. His heart and mind are racing, and he can't seem to find any more words to describe his feelings. So, he takes a deep breath, he grabs their hands, and they hug. Does this mean 
we can kiss too? Yes, Sasuke. If it's you, then I want to. They share one more warm, tender embrace, and as the golden light from the setting sun peers over the park, Sasaki asks one more time, Do you want to go out with me? Yeah. With that, after 12 episodes, they finally exchange phone numbers. Overall, I think this is a wholesome, inoffensive, and lighthearted BL love story. It's presented in a manner that's not overdone, and well, except for that one scene, and through the lens of having no bitches, absolutely, absolutely zero play. play, I think that the romance depicted is quite believable. It's refreshing to watch something that isn't brooding in atmosphere, heavy in subject matter, or just downright nullifying, but that's my fault though, because that's the kind of media I gravitate to more. One thing I shouldn't be too surprised about, but still found pretty bleh, was that it takes the entire season for the two to just fess up and come together? I mean, hey, what are they gonna do if they get together halfway through? Like, introduce a love triangle? Also, sorry that this video is just more or less me just summarizing the whole show as opposed to a proper analysis. I wanted to do the pyrocynical style, go through the entire show, and as you go along, you mention some interesting tidbits here and there, and break it down every now and then, but as I was editing this video, I realized that I'm not qualified enough to add anything of note, especially for a show like this. I, I will try my best to make up for it though, because the next script-heavy video will either be about a documentary or some old-ass Soviet films. So be on the lookout for that, and I'm really sorry if you feel like you've wasted 30 minutes. Okay, this has been long overdue, but oh my god, Sasaki's English VA is so good. Th I mean, there are times when he fringes on acting like a Ghost Stories dub character, but I think that adds to the charm of the show, and when the time does call for it, he can be pretty convincing too. I asked Dr. Google who VA'd Sasaki, and it turns out it's this guy named Kellen Goff, who you might know from Have you ever heard of Among Us? <laughs> Kurosawa also gets a shout out. I don't know if their VA has never acted in their life, or if they can perfectly encapsulate being a monotone, sarcastic, mega simp chad, but kudos to them as well. In fact, the whole dubbing cast deserves well-rounded applause. For curiosity's sake, I decided to check out the spin-off manga and read through all of the available chapters in three days. Yes, I make valuable use of my time, how can you tell? The moral of the story is, Watching this show may be considered gay, but I said no homo though. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in four months, let's say. Actually, hold on. I, before I go, I need to give this show a proper score. I wish homosexuals were real out of time. Okay, bye for real.